you can see that hello html box is behind the hello html work and it's only because my gender index is 50 so if anything now will be come up with z index 100 then that will be again it's understood it will be on top of the other one so this is how the z index works in css and this is how our position fixed work okay so now position fixed we got to know now there is something called a relative so you can say position relative what does that mean so relative means by default where its position was if i will not give any top and left there must be some default position that hello html uh, text will come up right so by default there is there is some position so from there i want top 100 pixel and left 400 pixel that's how it will work so instead of this html i'll just make it a relative that's the only change i'm doing you can see the rest everything is same what i'll do i'll just refresh this guy you can see now both is coming at different place but the top 90 pixels okay uh, top 90 pixel which was uh, which was there before everything is rest everything is same but only i have changed position relative because of that the red hello html comes down right why it went there because relative decides where its position was actually not here where it was because that was happening because i've given position fixed so without applying any css where ideally the html will render that from there the relative distance it will calculate from there how much top i have to take from there how much left i have to take so that's why it goes there so ideally this hello html red should be below the paragraph where i'm saying js is good css is cool html is nice the last line of that text after that its position is if i don't apply any css on that right so when i say position relative from its that position where it should be without css it calculates now the top 90 pixel and left 400 pixel so that's why from there now it's coming at that position and that is not fixed when you scroll you can see that's there at the bottom but my hello html yellow one because i've given position fixed you can see that's fixed over there i make it this much small also you can see that's fixed over there now i'm not able to see that yellow one why because that is fixed based on my entire view area so that will be fixed from my top 100 pixel it has to be from top 100 pixel that's why i'm not able to see that red one yellow one you can see that yellow one i'm not able to see but i'm able to see this hello html because that's a relative one and this yellow is hello html one is a fixed one so you got the difference so let's say if you give some time top is let's say 5000 pixel you will never see it because that 5000 pixel will be somewhere outside of your screen uh, and you can't see it you'll never see it because uh, because normal computer size your top cannot be 500 pixel right i mean your entire uh, height of your view area cannot be 5000 pixels so you'll never see that element so that's how the fixed and relative works any any doubt uh, difference between fix relative static two things we saw now static is a default one which comes by default and when position is static the top left parameter doesn't take effect cool it's clear okay now uh, there is one more value is there that's called absolute so what this absolute does so so we'll do that and we'll see how this absolute position works now so what i'll do now so instead of fix i'll make it absolute okay cool i'll reload it
so now you can see the difference beca because of absolute absolute is not fixed that's the only difference you can see the position remains there only where i was saying hello html one but now this hello html one is not fixed when i say fixed it will be fixed to your view area but when i say absolute means based on how much view area is available based on how much view area is available it decides its stop and left because now i make the view area small now you can see when i scroll it goes up right so 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 that's a smaller difference between your fixed and your absolute so fixed is fixed to your computer viewport so if you have compute from the computer i mean whatever the viewport is there from there it's 100 pixel that's all if you scroll also it has to be there but when you say absolute it's about how much you are viewing the the current view area not the actual view uh, website width and height it's whatever you are viewing from there it will calculate the top and left so that's why when i say top left 100 pixel it's still there so if you say position fixed or position absolute give some top and left it will come exactly there but the only difference is if my view area goes small based on that it scrolls and it goes up because it's not fixed to the actual uh, to your computer you can say it's not fixed to your computer top and left if you consider your entire computer is view area so that's the difference between your fixed and absolute so these three are the major what we use one is fixed one is relative one is absolute static is a default one then one thing is their inherit and what that inherit does inherit just inherit whatever the position property value is there for its parent it just inherits that so that's uh, one thing then one new thing has come up i think uh, that is sticky i'm not uh, sure what it does it's it, it's almost uh, same as position relative uh, but there is some minor differences there and i'm not sure about that i've never used that uh, the position uh, sticky so uh, the, the mostly used ones are position relative position absolute position fixed static is a default one okay cool okay what else okay so i'll go back to my slide now so that was what pending from my previous slide so i'll just close it and i'll share the new slide again okay so so what i'll do i'll share this one so i'm just adding here that html2 stuff also and position fixed and we'll give this guy just uh, 80 pixel z index both are same so we'll remove the z index for this guy I'll just refresh it. Okay, we'll just change some color. We'll make it orange. We'll remove this. Yeah, 
so we can able to see the other guy also HTML2, HTML1, HTML3 all the things are there so now you can test it out so I'll just so I can just download this and I'll show you when I'll share the slide okay so I'll just open a new slide give me a moment okay so now I'll talk about the CSS order uh, what are the orders a few things I have already talked so I'll talk a few things so there is something called CSS wild and what this uh, CSS wild uh, means uh, so if you say star and in between if you write any rules it will be applicable to all the elements so if something global you want to apply to all the elements you can say star and a comply uh, so let's say box sizing border box so in your entire application uh, let's say you want uh, you want to follow border box instead of content box so you can just uh, mention box sizing border box for so for every element your uh, box sizing will be border box so that's how it will be applicable to all the elements so it's not recommended to use this star very heavily because it's it makes the application slow because it keeps on applying to everyone every element whatever you add which is not good so that's why which is very very generic uh, you uh, you can uh, and you're sure you are not going to overwrite this element uh, in your application never so in this case you can uh, do that using star but if you're sure let's say if I say star color is blue for every element the color will be blue but you are sure your entire application the color will not be blue right for some some text you might want black some text you might want orange so so the color blue is not an ideal thing to do in star so like box sizing water box is ideal way to do in uh, inside star because yeah so that will be a global thing which you want to apply for all the elements okay so that's done and then one thing is called body so you know body is a kind of a uh, your first label child because the, your first label uh, parent is HTML tag inside that there will be two child one is head one is body and all your view everything code go inside body body element of HTML so you can directly apply some style to body element as well so let's say some font family you want to apply because you want uh, this font to be used for your entire application so those kind of styles you can directly apply in body that you can apply in star as well so these are few things called, called css wild so it, it will be applicable to all your elements so when you say body font family serif so body is a parent of all your view html so this font will be get applied to every html so that's how uh, that's the two things called css wild way of uh, applying styles to all the elements then I'll talk about the CSS order so CSS rule uh, this a uh, few things I have talked yesterday uh, session also not yesterday the day before yesterday session so the CSS rule which comes at the end of CSS file will get applied if different rules has been applied on same element that we know right let's say uh, my uh, HTML is having uh, two classes and both the classes is having a color property so the class which comes later will get applied on that element so if I have to uh, give example I'll just go back to Chrome okay I'll remove this guys okay so here I can have two classes I'll, I'll give one class as HTML other class I'm giving hello so on the same HTML you can have multiple class that's allowed you just it has just have to be a uh, space separated then I'll go to the CSS file and I'll write one more CSS saying hello 
and here background color is red right here I'll override this with yellow and when I reload this guy you can see the background color is yellow it's coming at the bottom hello HTML because it's overrides this guy because this comes after okay so that's how uh, the CSS works so whichever comes last uh, that will be get overridden by whichever they are at the first so that's a one order rule then second rule is rules defined with class has more specificity I mean more priority compared to rules applied with element so if you are applying any rules with elements saying just h1 then and you are applying to the same element by throw class then the rules which has been getting applied through class will have more specificity compared to rules applied with element okay then third thing rules defined with id has more specificity compared to rules applied with the class that also i talked yesterday uh, in my previous session okay then rules applied with more than one class will have more specificity compared to rules applied with single class so that also i sh uh, showed you uh, so you can have your class with multi you can apply some rules to the html elements based on multiple classes so that will have more specificity same way you can uh, come out with all the combination so you can have rules with class and id combination you can have rules with class class id you can have rules with element class and id everything is possible so these are the four major rules and all or, or the other order you can derive out of that which will have more specificity compared to other okay so apart from this everything there is one prop one more thing is there in css that's called important so mentioning important next to specific css property inside css files will have higher specificity compared to all so whatever way you do you apply with id you apply with multiple css thing you apply with multiple element css combination but anywhere if you say important that will have a utmost higher priority compared to everything else so if i just have to demonstrate that what i'll go i'll go over here and i'll just make it important okay although this is coming first when I say this is important to me and when I reload this guy you can say now the color is coming red because I have I have explicitly told this is important to me so that will be of higher priority with of everything okay so there is one way you can apply styles here also in HTML directly so there is a attribute called style itself here also I can apply some style I can say background color is blue okay so when I do that but still I can see red here you can see still red is there it's because the important has higher priority if you know don't say important then the next priority is this inline styling we call it inline styling this is not a best way to do the things you should not mention styling in your HTML file itself using style attribute that's not a good practice uh, you, you always uh, include styles in your CSS file but if you do this this will have a priority just next to important if i just remove the important from there if i just remove this important from here and if i do this then it should come blue you can see now it's blue yeah so that's how the order works in css Okay, now what are the best practice on specificity? What we can follow when we develop larger applications? For smaller application, you, you don't follow best practices. It doesn't impact much, but for a lot of, for bigger applications, the performance is 
utmost priority so you have to think of these practices so don't use important heavily as it slows down the painting of css styles on page so actually what happens the way we paint some draw same way the browser also paint the things when i say i have to make color blue when i have to say i have to make background color yellow blah 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 browser actually paints those so if you trying to apply the same property through different mediums through different classes then it slows down your process hey guys are you there i'm not I, it looks like you guys are offline when we apply id after applying to the two classes will id still be more specific hey guys are you there Yeah, I'm not able to. Uh, it shows you guys are offline. Are you there? Hello. Hey, uh, guys, looks like you guys have disconnected in between. So, uh, can you help me to tell uh, where you guys have disconnected? No, I mean, because I was seeing uh, you guys as offline. Uh, in the attendance list so you you are following everything yes now uh, you can't hear me are you able to hear me now okay so can you just tell me from where you guys have missed uh, looks like some go to meeting uh, issue was there uh, it was showing you guys offline to me okay so there was a question from savya when we apply id after applying uh, to the two classes will id will be more specific uh, I think uh, the two classes will be more specific because uh, one ID is powerful than one class. I still can't hear you. Dilip, can you hear me? Okay, now you can hear me, Dilip. Uh, Shravya, can you hear me? Shravya cannot. I can't hear. 
So that's bad. Okay, I'm not sure because Dilip is saying uh, he is able to hear me. So can you uh, disconnect and join again, Srabhya? Because Dilip is able to hear me. Okay, you guys are at the same place. Okay, so now both can hear me, right? Okay, cool. So I think Srabhya was having one question. If we say two classes and ID, uh, then yeah, two classes will have more specificity compared to ID. So ID is powerful than one class, but if you combine two class, that will be more powerful. But again, if you combine class and ID, that will be more powerful than uh, two classes. So that's how you have to uh, derive the things. Okay, so looks like after important, you guys uh, lost the thing, right? So after important, uh, I was talking about inline styling. So did you guys uh, able to follow that? Uh, so there is something called inline styling. So this we call as inline styling. So I can specify uh, the style in HTML as well, but which is uh, that's done. Okay, that's done. Okay, cool. I thought you guys missed that. Okay, so now I was talking about the best practices. So when you develop a smaller applications, your best practices doesn't matter much. But when you're working on a bigger applications, uh, uh, the best practices uh, matters a lot because your application, what you develop has to perform well and fast. So, uh, and how this, and when you use this important keyword multiple times or heavily on your CSS page, it slows down the pan painting activity of browser. Uh, so I literally browser paints everything uh, in, in a Chrome debugging tool. There is something called performance there. You can see how much time your browser took to paint your CSS styles. So if, let's say the same HTML element you are styling through different channels let's say you're styling the same element uh, through ID you're styling the same element through uh, some class some other class when you add the when you're styling I mean when you're trying to override the same property if I applying multiple property that doesn't harm much uh, that's that doesn't slow down but the same property if you keep on overriding let's the color so initially you decided the color should be blue then with some other thing you decided no the color has to be orange then you decided no color has to be black means you multiple time painting you're asking browser to paint it multiple times so what browser does it reads that first okay it pay, go over there is disturbance in your voice in between you want all us, us to restart the session oh Okay, now we'll just try uh, once more whether you guys are able to hear. So is it fine now? Are you able to hear me without disturbance? Or still the disturbance is there? Okay, cool. So I think that is it. So that's what I was uh, trying to say. Uh, so browser paints it. So it's, it's never a best practice to use important. Uh, multiple or heavily uh, you try to avoid that then there is something called inline styling so inline styling also has more specificity what we saw but always it's not best practice to use inline styling always avoid inline styling because uh, you make your CSS and HTML separate so that will be easier to debug the things and and then you don't apply same style through multiple options uh, that also are not a good practice to be followed because it makes our uh, debugging tougher it it makes browser to do more job so so it can so that performance will be uh, hampered so these are the few basic things you can uh, follow uh, so Apart from that, uh, there is something called CSS reset, which actually uh, people use uh, for fresh projects. So all browsers will have some different base style for each element. Most are same, 
sorry some some crackers are uh, rusting uh, outside my area so you might hear a bit of cracker sound in between sorry for that so so all browsers will have some uh, different base styles for each of the element uh, so most of the browsers will have the almost same but sometimes they differ uh, based on uh, their pixel size uh, their uh, uh, h1 will have this much pixel or uh, your div will have this much pixel the darkness of black color those all things are there so let's say you want to standardize it even before starting your application so that your application works seamlessly on all browser so so that you, you can reset all the major css properties oh, and how to reset that there is some link i have provided over here so we'll just go over and open that link so this uh, someone has uh, created some developer which uh, will help us so you can see uh, so you can see how you can specify few things you can see almost all the html elements has been mentioned over there and then we have uh, mentioned few things like margin has to be zero padding has to be zero border has to be zero font size 100 percent vertical and baseline so there is some some other things also so these are the few uh, reset things so this is means we are resetting the stuff which by default browser set uh, to our application when we don't apply any of the css type so so if you want your application to look same across all your browsers then you can do that initially uh, uh, when your application loads you can load this reset file as your first file so that it will reset everything and then you can apply your old uh, your own css style so this is just a practice it's not like you you have to follow it to develop an application you can omit that most of the browsers are now a bit aligned but i think safari and internet explorer explorer is not a bit aligned but if you see the chrome and the firefox they are almost same uh, but uh, internet explorer older versions internet Explorer newer version the safari uh, which is there on the mac are not bit aligned you might see a here and there bit difference when you load the same page on different browser so to avoid that you can have this reset kind of thing uh, initially so this is just a suggested one the best practice one it's it's not a mandatory okay then uh, the final thing of uh, today's session that is uh, the document flow so in browser um, all elements float next to each other right uh, so other instead of putting each element on a new line uh, because my previous element takes the entire line uh, it flows to the next line if there is some space will be there on on that previous line if that my previous box is not taking the entire space then by default browser tries to take that space i mean the next element try to take that space so that's how the browser's document flow works so in browser all elements flow next to each other instead of putting each element on new line before you so to show you that what i can do i'll we'll go back to our plunker and what we'll do so we'll remove this our position relative guy and i'll just add one more line after this okay and here i'll remove this i'll just give html1 and here i'll give hello html1 i'll come back to css uh, here i'll say dot html1 okay and here i'll specify some width as uh, let's say 100 pixel okay i'm just removing top and left for now And then I'll just reload this guy. Okay, you can see hello HTML is there. And this also now I'll give us with 100 pixel. Okay, it still comes uh, next to each other because of what because you can see uh, although i have given them a width is 100 pixel 
but when I highlight you can see that is taking my entire face you can see uh, that highlighting the entire thing because this because of the uh, margin stuff so it's taking uh, the entire page so we'll how if I want next to that then what I have to do so I'll just show you some other example for that uh, just give me a moment develop some example for that as well good food okay so I'm removing everything and I'm putting a cool new thing entirely a big page with some CSS and I just reload this so in the interest of time what I does I just write it previously so that will not take much time on our class okay so you can see something uh, so let's say I'll just comment out the CSS first and we'll see without CSS how it looks. So, oh my God. Just reload this again. I have made this auto reload off. So, I have to reload every time. Okay, so so what this HTML is uh, having, I'll just explain that, that first. Oh man, why it's not scrolling here and there. Then it works. I'm not sure what went wrong here. So I'll just copy the code again. Okay, so it's pretty simple. I'm just having uh, two divs. You can see uh, two divs and inside the two diff there are two paragraphs and this paragraph is just some uh, lorem ipsum text nothing is there no meaning okay and i'm having two classes one class for the initial div and one class for the paragraph nothing so two paragraphs in there in my page when i see these two paragraphs you can see it's just uh, floating next to each other right let's say if i want to uh, make it uh, vertical so currently these two paragraphs are horizontal the first paragraph is taking this here the space the second paragraph again starts from here but it just comes uh, in horizontal right not vertical let's say i want to make it vertical then what i can do so i'll just apply a few small css rule things and you can see how uh, this will work okay first i'll apply some uh, global thing so this is just global i want to apply some fun family the color the background color so this is a global that's why i put it in a body thing okay okay now this is important what you see so what i have given i given them some width 45 percent you can give values in percentage as well so when I say 45 percent means entire thing is 100 percent so in that 100 percent I want my paragraph to take only 45 percent of width so let's say if entire thing is 100 pixels it will just take 45 pixels Done. then I'm saying you take margin right is 2 percent so by default whatever the margin size will be there for that HTML uh, by default for the browser there will be some margin will be there for that uh, particular element right here this is the p element 
no sorry the div element so div element will be by default will be having something uh margin because inside that p is there I'm just saying I don't need that much margin. I just want two percent margin of my width. Okay. Then I'm saying float left. This is a critical one. Okay. So if I'll just comment it out and I'll just and I'm just giving some border, some margin bottom, some padding, some background color, uh, some border radius, which I'll comment also. So these two things we don't know. A part of everything we are aware of. I'll just reload this how it looks. You can see how it looks it takes the 45 percent space but my next uh, paragraph is coming at down only it's not taking that right space okay so although some space is there but it's not taking so if you want your browser to say take that space as well you just have to say float left so float is a property which i'm just saying you float to the left Uh, just give me a moment. I'm just receiving a call. Just a moment. I have to take it. Hello. okay so i just have to say float left if i just say float left then it will just float to left cool now you can see the float left how, how it works and what this border radius does border radius you can see now i am seeing some sharp border uh, the sharp border and the edges so you just want to make it bit circular then you can use this property that's border radius and with that now you can see the the borders of this it is some circular the edges are circular now if you want to inspect you can see the different thing how much space uh, space everything is taking this is my blog post if you go to the computer you can see how how this things are working now and go to the second guy see this things right so let's say you don't want margin two percent i'll make it margin five percent it's going down why because I have asked for so much margin that other paragraph will not have that much space to reside over there so I can I have to make it 2% so if I have three paragraph I can make it 30 30 30 right so that's how you can uh, decide your things okay so this is about uh, the float the float property and for float I have to make that uh, things uh, as an example then okay there are one more style I'll apply which will even two more thing you can uh, see uh, so I can apply a style called blog post so I'm applying some style to paragraph saying line height what does this line height does line height will give you some uh, difference between your line height so I'm saying 1.5 and I'm saying text intent so you can see how different will look now you can see the line height and the text intent so this is how you can uh, you can uh, make your so the default was something was there and when I try to do inspect you can highlight over there and if you want to observe what the difference it makes you can you can come over here and you can modify the things you can override your line height you can make one pixel 
oh, sorry just one you can see how clumsy things are now 1.5 things looks better right so this is how you can do and when i say text intent when i say 50 pixel 100 pixel so did you get what the text intent is so the first line of your paragraph will start leaving how much space from your left border that's a text intent is so i said 20 pixel that's why second one you can see some 20 pixel stay uh, space is there before the lower end word when i say 100 pixel you can see the 100 pixel space is there from your left border to lower end. so this is how you can style your paragraph so these are the two properties line height and text intent for that you can see when i apply text intent over here the text next next text intent is coming as a cut so that means the first text intent is getting applied so that's why it's saying so cut means it was also there but although i have override with this guy so that's why it's showing this value has been get applied so that's why it, it has put a cut line on the second one where i am saying text intent 20 pixel so this is a debugger feature which says uh, which one get applied when you're trying to apply the same property with different values through different mediums okay cool okay so the browser tries to fit as many divs next to each other until no space left so float applies to block element only it cannot be applied to inline elements so for inline elements the float is not going to work so for inline element you have to say uh, text left write those things okay okay what all example i have i'll just try to see you if anything difference i can show you guys no this i have already explained uh, so that's all what i was having uh, for you just give me a moment i'll give you some uh, exercise as well uh, so that you guys can try it out at your time and this will be very interesting exercise what i'm going to give you now you can see uh, this guy uh, this uh, exercise four and i'm put some uh, picture over there so i want to create a page something like this so what i have created just a two column layout right where the two paragraph were coming to next to each other as a vertically so two column so i want you uh, you guys to try it out to develop something like this so create a sample page like below use any image i have just put a cat over there you can use any images of your choice and make header color alternative blue and orange i want this also so picture one should show in blue then picture two should be orange again picture three will be blue and picture four will be orange and i want to see how optimized you can do that uh, you can do it without optimization also but and make the text under picture also colorful so this is exercise and i want this is should be your layout it should so you can use a border margin padding whatever you want to use float left what the percentage of which should be all this you have to decide so that it will look like this okay so with this uh, that's all for today guys uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask anything and uh, one information for you guys uh, and i heard from my team like uh, you guys uh, want more uh, session on angular js and node js so we'll we'll devote some more time on angular js and node js and before starting if you say something you are comfortable with like say whatever the curriculum i have showed you on my first session if you say i'm comfortable with basic javascript and all i'm not going to cover those so we'll skip those because it's, it's of no use if you guys know that it's of no use for me to explain those again so i'll skip those so whatever uh, things will interest you uh, I'll, I'll i'll talk about more that and react js to please okay so this uh, i can't decide because whatever the curriculum me and my team has decided their react js is not there 
and angular 2 also not there today only i discussed them with the morning so you have to talk that with your manager whom you're contacting so you talk them you need angular 2 and react also then we'll uh, try to add it because that's what they told uh, like from your side it has been not been informed uh, i need javascript as per schedule i don't know much okay cool i'll, I'll cover javascript uh, no issues they the lip uh, so you can you, you can convey that you can convey that uh, the lip or Shravya that you need uh, Java uh, sorry react and angular 2 as well you are interested in then I'll, I'll be happy to teach that because that was not planned so I, I got cannot deviate from the plans you, you can understand that okay so anything else guys you want to uh, know Okay, so after CSS, we'll have JavaScript only, and after JavaScript, I'll, I'll cover jQuery. Okay, nothing much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, have a good weekend. Bye bye.